What's up, YouTube? I'm David Warren, and welcome back to this week's video. Two updates for you before we get started. I am back on YouTube, and I am still in CRNA school. And today, I want to talk to you about an interesting topic, and that is mistakes that I would advise you to avoid. And so if you're new here, you probably realize that I haven't posted a video in quite a while, but I'm back on the train now. Consider subscribing. My content is all about being in anesthesia school or being a nurse practitioner because I've been both and that's where I'm at right now. So today I want to talk to you about what I would advise you to avoid, some of the mistakes that I've made, some of the things that I just like look back at my life and I'm like, I could have probably done that a little bit better. And this is all in regards to my like professional life. This is not like super personal, but more in regards to my like profession as a nurse practitioner, now as an anesthesia student, what are some things that I would advise you to do? Because over the past probably three years, since I've had this YouTube channel and since I've had a bit of a public appearance on social media, uh, you guys have emailed me, you've DM'd me on Instagram, and you've asked questions about what should I do? I'm in this situation, what should I do? And I wanna kind of address that today. Like looking back at my own life, professional career, what are some things that I've done that maybe I could have done a little bit differently that may have led to a different outcome? And so that's kind of the take that I want to give today in the video. And so I'm going to just jump right into it. The first thing I would advise you to do if you, wherever you are in your career, this is more geared towards like if you're going into college and you're getting ready to choose your career, I would say think thoughtfully about what you want to do for the rest of your life. Think thoughtfully about your career would be number one. Because I look back at myself and I see when I graduated high school, I was really contemplating either going to medical school or going to nursing school with the idea of being a nurse practitioner or a CRNA. Those were my like plans at the time. And really at the time I didn't delve deep into other career paths. And so I look back now and, and there are kind of two areas that I wanna go down here. The first area is what if I didn't go into healthcare ever? Like if I went into some other industry and I never really gave that a second thought when I was trying to choose a career. And I think that's probably germane to a lot of people. Like I think a lot of people go into college thinking, maybe not a lot, but I feel like most people go into college thinking, oh, I, you know, this interests me or that interests me, or I kind of want to go down this route, or I kind of want to go down that route. <clears throat> and this is especially true of people in medicine, because in the ERs that I've worked in, I've had scribes that have been with me and typically scribes, I'm sure there might be some scribes watching this, but you know that most scribes, it's not like a lifetime job. It's a job that usually college students get to get some healthcare hours to go into either medical school, PA school, or nursing school. It's usually what that is. There's some exceptions, but for the majority, that's what it is. And so I think even those people don't really go in considering, hey, there are other options out there. Like I'm so set on medicine. This is this is the end all of everything. And I think I had a little bit of that as well. I thought I'm, I'm going to go to either medical school or nursing school or something of that nature. And I didn't really give other career areas a thought. And so the first like rabbit hole I want to go down is think thoughtfully about that because going into healthcare. It's not all roses. I'm sure everybody, probably 90% of people who are watching this are in healthcare, you know it's not all roses. And I think like, how would my life be differently had I not gone into healthcare ever? If I like chose some other alternate career path like computer science, engineering, software engineering, something like that. And so I would say like, just think thoughtfully about that, consider those. And what does that look like? That looks like Doing your research, do your due diligence on those career paths, on what you want to do. This is not only for people who are going into college, but maybe for you who are watching who maybe want a career change. Like think thoughtfully about what you want to do and don't just jump into another career path thinking, oh, this is going to solve all my problems. Really think about, and the way you can do that is do some research, find out what do they do day to day? What's the salary like? What are their work hours like? And kind of last, I would say, is go shadow that particular profession. Go spend some time with a software engineer or a computer engineer or a physician or a CRNA or an NP. For those of you who want to go to NP school or who want to go to CRNA school, a lot of people have messaged me over the years and have, have asked for guidance. And one of the pieces of advice that I almost give every single person is go shadow who you want to be. 
know, if you want to be an NP, go shadow the NP so you know what you're getting yourself into. And it's not a big surprise. And I get that you're not going to get all of the detail. You're not going to get everything you need to know in like eight hours of shadowing somebody. I realize that. But you do get a general idea of what they do day to day, what their life looks like. You can ask questions. And it's good to establish contact with somebody like that. So if you're interested in going to NP school, you get contact with an NP, you go shadow that person and they can be kind of your go-to person. And you can ask questions about, hey, what does schooling look like for you? What did your classes look like? Were you able to work? Things like that. And I think that's super, super, super important and something that I didn't really do. Like I don't necessarily think I did my due diligence on wanting to go to nursing school. My thought was, okay, I can get out in four years and I can work and then I can decide if I want to go to medical school or MP school or whatever. And I didn't really give it a second thought. When I wanted to go to nursing school, I was like, that's what I'm going to do. And that all started with me when I was a child. I was like obsessed with the hospital shows, ER, all those like shows that, you know, aren't real and don't portray medicine in the right way. And so I was obsessed with that and that's what I wanted to do. And that's kind of how I ended up in in medicine. And I think this is a, a bigger problem with our world and with society is that we have 16, 17, 18 year olds choosing what they want to do for the rest of their lives that early on, you know, their, their brains aren't even fully developed and yet they're choosing a career path that they're going to stay on for, for the rest of their lives. And some people that works out fine and some people know this is what I want to do. I'm going to do this the rest of my life and they do it. And then some people like me realize, okay, maybe I don't want to do that. I want to do this or I want to do that. And you're kind of going in all different directions. And so I would say for me, I should have really thought more thoughtfully about what I wanted to do for the rest of my career. Now, I know you're thinking like, would you go back and do it differently? And I don't know that I would honestly, because I think things happen for a reason. And I know like, had I graduated high school and I went to software engineering or engineering on, on that route. Like I know it, my life would look drastically different than it would now. And I don't know what that would look like. We, we really don't know what those alternate universe paths look like because we haven't done that or I haven't done that. But I know you're probably thinking like, would you have actually gone to NP school if you knew you were going to go to CRNA school later? And I think the answer is probably yes. Like, I don't think that was a mistake because I look back at my life. I look back at after nursing school, going to NP school, and I look back at my career since finishing my nurse practitioner degree. I look at the emergency departments I've worked in. I look at the states that I've worked in. I look at my time off when I started traveling. Like, I, I highly, highly doubt if I went into some alternate career that I would have the time off like I do, that I, I like I had the time off like I did when I was a nurse practitioner traveling. I was able to work for a month and I could take one or two months off. And my finances would allow that and the schedule would allow that, like everything aligned and it was great work-life balance. Sure, there were some bad sides, there were some things I didn't necessarily like, but it's really give and take. Did I like flying to Alaska every month? You know, did it get old sometimes? every other month. It got old sometimes, but the benefits outweighed the risk, I think. And that is the salary and the time off because I really enjoy time off. And so that played well with me. But would I have done it differently? Would I have mixed the NP thing all together and just gone straight to CRNA school? I don't really know. I don't think so. I really don't because I look back, like I said, at my life, I look back at the times that I've had, the time off that I've had, the things I've gotten to see in Alaska, the other places that I've gotten to work, the impact that I've gotten to make on people's lives. And I think it's all been worth it in the end. I think it's easy to look back and be like, oh, that was a mistake. I should have done that. I don't necessarily think it was, but I do think for some people, it could be a mistake. Like I know some of you, I've had messages from people before who have been like, why did you go to NP school if you're just going to turn around and go to CRNA school? Like that was a big waste of years. And so for some people that might be a mistake. For you, it might be a mistake to go to NP school and then later decide to go to CRNA school. Might be for you. For me, it's not because I try to look at the whole picture and think, what would I have done differently? And so my first point, wrapping up, thoughtfully think about what you want to do for the rest of your career. And I didn't really do that initially. It's worked out okay for me, but I didn't really do that. Some people get into like a business career or some other career, or even nursing and realize this is not what I want to do. I've got to do something different. And I'm not necessarily that way. Like I want to do different things. I want to diversify, but 
like I don't I wouldn't consider me going to NP school and then choosing to go to CRNA school a mistake because I've really enjoyed where my life has led me up until this point. So I would say though, think thoughtfully about what you want to do for the rest of your life. My second point is diversify your income. Diversify your income. And what do I mean by that? So most people have a single stream of income. So nursing, engineering, physician, <clears throat> being a nurse practitioner, things of that nature. Like there's one stream of income and that's it. And really the, the like multiple streams of income or passive income idea didn't really come into play, I think, until the past like few years, honestly. Because even when I was going through NP school, like it wasn't really talked about to diversify your income and have like multiple streams of passive income coming in. And so, I, I didn't really think about that, but looking back now, that's the end goal for me is to have multiple streams of passive income. Sure, I want to work in anesthesia, I want to work as an NP, but I don't want to do that like full time for the rest of my life in one location in one job. Like my goal after CRNA school is to either travel some like I did as an NP, most places require experience, so I'll probably have to work a little bit or alternate that with traveling as an NP because I really don't want to give up being an NP altogether. Like I really want to incorporate that into my life in some way or another. But diversifying your income is super important. And one way that I've done this is through my YouTube channel. So my YouTube channel is monetized. I get paid monthly based on it, not very much, but I do get paid some. If I posted videos regularly and people watch them regularly, I probably would get paid a little more. But, and I'm trying to get back on that. I'm really trying to get back on to posting on a regular schedule. We're kind of getting off topic here, but diversify your income. Some people get into real estate investing. So you have rental properties. You can get into rental arbitrage for Airbnb. I've really looked into that hard the past few months. I would advise you to Google or to, or to YouTube uh, Airbnb arbitrage. That's a pretty cool concept. This is not the video for it, but that's a way to diversify your income. Take your income and invest it somewhere. Invest it in mutual funds, invest in the stock. Don't invest in the stock market. The stock market's down like 20% this year. Not a good idea. Been there, done that. Don't recommend. However, with that being said, the stock market's not a bad idea if you plan to stay in it long term. So over like a five to 10 year period, the stock market always wins because it's always going to come back over the long term. Now, if you get in it for a year like I did and you know, you're know you down 20%, of course you're going to lose money. But if you stay in it for the long term, stay in it for five to 10 years, stock market always wins. So that's one way to diversify your income. And something that I didn't really consider until I was like 31 years old, I should have thought about that years before. And some of you on here have YouTube channels and have presence on social media, Instagram, et cetera, and you might be monetized. That might be a strategy to bring in income for yourself. And if so, keep doing it because let me tell you, when you get into your career, you're gonna want to have time off and having those alternate streams of income will really help you not be in the eight to five or the 12 hour shifts three days a week. You can like relax on your real jobs and let some of your other income streams come in and help you out. And so that's one thing I wish I had done is really diversify my income because I didn't really think about that until I was almost 30 years old. And I think about had I started that when I was 20 years old or going into college, like who knows where I would be. That's like an alternate path that I, that I, that I like think about at times. And I, I don't know where I would be had I done that. And so that's one thing I would recommend. The third point I want to give you is work on yourself, really, really work on yourself. And I mean that mentally and physically. And so I want to break it down. The first point being mentally, I think a lot of people think that, um, you know, I don't have any problems with myself. Like I'm fine the way I am. It's everybody else. And I'm not saying that's me and I'm not saying that's you, but that's like a, that's like a, a common idea that people have. It's like, it's not me. Like I, there's nothing wrong with me. And I think even the people that have grown up in like sound households, like with parents who are both present in their lives, parents who love them. And I think even in those great situations, like you can still find ways to work on yourself. And that took me, I think a little bit of time to think about because I grew up with amazing parents. They were very much present in my lives. They like showed affection and like they were just good parents. And I still have a great relationship with my family as a whole. And I look back and I, and there are like things in my life that have been traumatizing, especially in my teenage years and my adult years. And I think it's important to work through those things because those things 
really affects you more than you probably know. And so uh, the older I get, the more I realize that. And so I think it's important to work on yourself. And what does that look like? Like, I, it's very easy to say, oh, you need to work on yourself. But like, what does it actually mean? And that means like, for me, talking to a therapist, like I see a therapist, I'm going to start seeing a therapist. I saw a therapist about a month ago. I have started this a few years ago, kind of fell off the bandwagon, got back on it. I'm in school now, but I'm doing Zoom sessions with uh, my therapist. And it's been super helpful. And especially with all the new stressors of being in school, being in CRNA school, that's a big enough stressor as it is that I think anybody could benefit from therapy. So really work on yourself. And that may not be seeing a therapist for you. You may not want to do that. You may not be interested in doing that. And that's fine. I'm not telling you to go see a therapist. But for me, that's what that's what working on my mental health looks like. Talking to somebody, talking it out with a professional and getting some help on how I can better myself, how I can eliminate bad habits and better myself. And so that's something I would encourage you to do is work on yourself mentally. And the sub, other sub point to that is work on yourself physically as well. And so working out, being physically active is just so vitally important, especially for me, because a lot of, especially in CRNA school now, most of the day I'm like sitting and studying and it's just like, ugh, it makes you just want to like curl up in a ball and like dissolve. But being physically active is so important. And so if you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I like run. I love running. I've ran for, I'm almost coming up on my 10 year anniversary of running. I started in 2013. So next year will be 10 years of consistent running. Now I haven't always been super consistent, but I've within this year, I've gotten way more consistent than I ever have. I make it a point almost every day to go for a walk or to go for a run, either go for a two mile walk or I go between a three and eight mile run, somewhere in that range. My goal before I turned 30 was to run 10 half marathons. I made it to nine half marathons. COVID hit, I didn't get to finish the 10th. So I still have to run one more half marathon, but like setting small physical goals for yourself like that. And it's not about weight. It's not about, oh, I've got to like whip my body into shape. That's not it at all. It's really all about preserving your mental health through your physical well-being. And that's something that I wish I had learned when I was younger, like when I was a teenager, even through college and even into the first couple years of my career as a nurse, like I really wished I had prioritized my physical health and I didn't do that. I think it's probably common for especially college students to not prioritize your physical health. I think it's getting better, especially with athletes. But I think even after college, you're getting into your job. Like it's so important to prioritize your physical health. It's super common to come home and be like, oh, I'm just so tired. I just worked 12 hours. Like I can't go for a run. That was me. I've done that. And you still have to like get out and do it because it's just vitally important for your mental health to take care of your physical well-being. And so I would say really work on your physical and mental health, whatever that looks like for you. If it's like seeing a therapist, talking it out with a family member, a friend, whatever it is, listening to a like self-help podcast, reading, whatever that looks like for your mental health, do it. And especially for, for your physical health as well. Go for walks, go for runs. Maybe you're not a walker or a runner. Go to the gym, do something, get active. It will help you so much. It, is, it has helped me so much. On the days that I don't work out on my rest days, sometimes I'm like, man, I really wish I weren't taking a rest day and I could like go some, you know, go do something. So really work on yourself is what it comes down to. All right, my last point is give yourself some grace. Give yourself some grace. I think this is um, challenging for many people. I know it's challenging for me uh, to really give yourself some grace, especially where you're at right now, wherever that is for you. For me, it's in CRNA school. And sometimes when I'm not studying like 10 hours a day and I take a day off, I really, really feel guilty for it. And I know I shouldn't, like I know that I need some time off, like even oof, my alarm, sorry, I had an alarm set for something this morning. It just went off. Anyway, it scared me a little bit. And I think where I was, okay. So give yourself some grace. I think like where I'm at in CRNA school, studying like eight to 10 hours a day, it's easy to be like, oh, I've got so much more to do. There's all, there's literally always something on my plate with school. Like even if I take a day off, it's like, okay, there's the stuff looming in the background, but it's so important to take that time off, take that day off a week. 
And this may look completely different for you. Whatever it is, give yourself some grace. Like for me, it looks like not studying seven days a week and taking a day off. Sometimes I'm like, ah, I feel so guilty for that. But really give yourself some grace on that point, whatever that is for you. If that's like going out and having a cheat meal or going out with some friends for drinks or for dinner one night, like give yourself some grace. Let yourself do some things that are comforting to you. And I am historically not very good at that. Like I'm always on the go, 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 go. And I could really like sometimes take a day off and just chill and be like, okay, this is my day off. I'm going to like embrace it. I'm going to eat junk food. I'm going to lay on the couch, whatever that looks like. Give yourself some grace in regards to that. So those are the points I have for you today. If you're new here, consider subscribing. This is all about being a nurse practitioner, being a CRNA student, eventually being a CRNA. If you have questions or if you have other suggestions, drop them below. I would love to hear them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.